Hi there. So I was going to show you the same as previously with the modeling process where I just took all the footage that I've recorded, speed it up and put it into a long but condensed video. However, looking back on it while editing, I realized that there wasn't too much educational content to be taken out of that. And it wasn't always clear what I was doing and why. So what I've instead decided to do is take the model I've finished with and walk you through it. So what I've done here is I've started with just assigning a basic material, a generated UV checker material, so that this way I can see where we've got stretching and how the unwrap looks as we do it. Key thing to do first when, before we start is we make sure we go to our properties up here, up in the options in the top right corner, and we click live unwrap. Now that's quite important because it allows us to see the updated UVs as we're working. Now, so what we'll do is we'll go through it piece by piece, starting with the simpler pieces and then going on to the more complex pieces. But hopefully you'll learn the lessons from the easy ones and see how they apply later on. Looking at the propeller at the front, isolate that. Very straightforward. For this, I did apply the modifiers so that I had a clear understanding of how the booleans were going to work. If I zoom in on the left here, you can see that they're quite straightforward. They're nice and flat and with, there's just a simple seam that goes around the back edge here. And importantly, that's hidden against the rest of the model, so you won't see that seam in the texture. Arguably, we could do without those faces at the back, and if we were going to put this into a game engine, you probably want to delete that just to save on geometry and on texture space. But additionally, this is also very small on the texture space and isn't taking up any room that would otherwise be needed by other components. Moving on now onto the propeller blades themselves, this was, what you have to do when you're doing this is boil it down to the mesh primitives. Now you can see here obviously this is very closely resembling a cylinder, so we use the same basic principles where you have your seam at the bottom, at the top and along the side. So what I've done here is I've gone along the thinnest part of the blade where hopefully the seam won't be too obvious and along the top and what I can do here is I've got a double seam here so I can actually get rid of that one with control E clear seam. So with the live unwrap you do have to be careful because what's happened here is it's changed where it is on the UV texture and it's made it much larger than I would like. So I'm going to undo that. Uh, just for this purpose, I'm going to take off live unwrap, then clear those seams. And hopefully, thankfully it doesn't matter because what I've done here is I've taken these faces and they are put them very small in this corner because ultimately the texture doesn't need to be high resolution at such an insignificant part of the model. Going back to the rest of it, as I said, seam along the short edge because hopefully it won't be too obvious. With this down here, I did decide to put it into two separate pieces because the piece in the center, the main part of the blade, is the key part. That's where we want most of the detail. This section down here, by the way, I'm using L to highlight that and I've got seam selected, so I'm selecting the linked area. So this part down the bottom is actually obscured by the, the nose. So if I unhide that, you can see that it's not actually seen. So again, arguably, we might not need it, but I thought I'd keep it in there because this isn't going to be a game asset. Where these are instances of that, these all share the same texture space. So that's saving on space once again. What I'll do here is I'll isolate the engine parts and I'll show you what I've done here. So once again using the same principles as a cylinder, so I've got the top, I've got the bottom seams and I've got one going up along the side. What I've also done is I've done a couple on the inside because I don't need those to be super detailed because they're going to be you know, occluded by the engine itself and also by the rest of the model. So you can see here it's quite straightforward and it's got quite a nice unwrap with minimal stretching but again I'm not too concerned with this piece because it's quite a small piece it doesn't need a ton of detail but it will 
affect sort of the grungy texture that I will be wanting to put on this later. That's all the pieces that are, oh no, sorry, tell a lie. We do have the ailerons, so I'll go into that, but they're very similar to the wings. Thinking about our mesh primitives, this is a uh, cubic shape. If we look at this UV unwrap here, so with a with a bot cube, we've all done this in school where you, you take the, the net, you take this shape that's on the left, uh, you cut it out and you fold it up and stick it together making a paper box. It's exactly the same principles when you're UV unwrapping. So we've got the top here which will be, so these three edges, if you were to cut these with scissors that will create this section here. So I'll control E and mark that seam. Now what we want is we want these two side pieces, those are going to be the equivalent of these here. So we don't want to cut those out but we do want to cut them here and here to separate them from the body. So I'll mark those seams and then finally that should just about do it. So if I were to you unwrap that you can see we have exactly the same shape once again. The lessons we can take from this is that we need the sides to have their three edges seamed here and then the top face along there. So if we were to now take this, in fact let's put these both into edit mode, what we can do here, we can see that these sides should probably have their uh, sides done. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try this piece again just to see if we can get this to be even better. I'll show you what I have already. So what we have is we've got this piece here which is uh, the inside of the aileron which is once again obscured by the wing so uh, we might keep want to keep this face in case we animate it so that when the ailerons lift and drop then you can actually see the geometry behind it um, so there's that there so I'll put one down the side and one in the top corner but again very small because we don't need the geometry we don't need the texture space because we don't need the detail what's important here is the top and the bottom piece which ideally we would want to have the largest texture space for so what's you, what you can see I've done here is I've split it down the middle though if we we're to look at our cube that's probably not necessarily the optimal way of doing this and it will certainly show this seam along the back however currently I'm not too concerned because a it's a thin edge B and B and B it splits the top and bottom so I don't think it will be too obvious but let's see what happens if we try this again so I'll select all of this I'll clear my seams and I'll take these edges here uh, I will take this here and control click all the way around so that's our three edges there I'll take these here go down here unmark those, C to circle select and I will mark those seams. So looking back at our piece again, so what we have to do now, you can see that these two flaps they come out from the sides but you have this loop around the middle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a seam along the top, mark that seam. So if I select all of this you unwrap we have quite a nice unwrap there actually um, and you know what I think I'm going to keep that because it's gotten rid of that seam along the middle and it's keeping it with minimal seams and with very little stretching if any maybe some up here but again I'm not too concerned about that what I can do now is I can take this, I'm going to delete that cube from earlier, I'm going to open this in edit mode along with our main aeroplane, I'm going to select the aileron here and I'm going to shrink it down, going to rotate it 90 and bring it here, scale it up. But what I need to be careful of is actually I need to ensure that everything is selected 
and everything is in edit mode so I can see all of my texture space at once because previously you may have seen that there was a space here but that is actually taken up by the propeller. Now we have our aileron piece down here, I can press L to select linked there, rotate it, scale it and try and utilize as much of that texture space as possible. What I could do if I was concerned is I could shrink this here but as we can see that is for the main wing which definitely needs more of the texture space particularly if we're going to be putting decals on it later so what you can see now where I'd previously done this is I'd left this space along the bottom for the two halves of the aileron I think I may stick to this because I've optimized the texture space in such a way that it would probably be preferred so that's an easy fix I zoom into my aileron here using the full stop on my numpad I'm going to put a seam all the way along the bottom here control clicking across control E mark seam select all and unwrap the once again and scale it down rotate it 90 degrees and I can now bring this all the way over here if I uh, click on it press L to select linked once again it's a very similar command now I'm going to show you an issue I ran into quite a lot when I was doing this you can see that I've selected this island and select linked and when I grab it I'm moving the vertices from the other island this issue being is because of this setting up here the UV sync selection now what that's doing is these vertices are connected to these vertices here so it's dragging those around what we want to do instead is we want to untick this so that we can just move this on its own however now you see the problem is that we don't know where the other UVs are on our texture space so what we're going to do is I'm going to select all on the right hand side in our 3D viewport now when I select the link I'm only selecting that island which is much more useful for when trying to place it in our UV space. So what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to take this, I'm going to move this into a space that's not used because it's a small detail once again. Now although the bottom may have less detail on it, I do want to ensure that the UV textures are rough, at least roughly the same scale just in case there aren't any decals and ensure that it, the model is as consistent as possible. So once again, L to select both, scale it up and just move it into place as best I can. So hopefully this is better than it was previously. Uh, if we're being particularly pedantic, what I could do is I could ensure that the uh, squares are going directly across my model so I can rotate that slightly and just make sure that the those edges are parallel to the straight edge but I'm not too fussed about getting it perfect what else you could do is you could work on the texel density now what that would mean is that this square here would be on this UV island would be the same size as this texel square on this UV island this is particularly important when using generated coordinates when you're texturing later because what will happen is the same texture will show as different sizes on the two different UV islands. What this means is that if you have a large piece of grunge here that should carry over onto that same piece of wing then it will suddenly change size when you come over here. What I can do to mitigate this is I can use texture painting or something similar. The thing with texture painting is some could argue I could just have done a smart UV project because when it comes to painting the islands don't matter so much because you're painting across the seams anyway but it is still good practice for just in case. Let's go on to the main body now. We're going to shift H to hide everything else, tab into edit mode and now you can see where I have all my seams. You can see that I have quite a few islands, I'll just make this bigger so you can see and we'll start down the front and work our way backwards. So once again, as I said, you have to think of this as a primitive shape. The fuselage obviously is cylindrical mostly. So I've got my front seam here. I've hidden the seam on the inside of this chamfer 
so it's behind that the nose and once again this front face could be I could delete some faces if optimizing for a game engine uh, equally that's the reason I'm not too concerned with the seam and the change in density here what I then have is if I press L to select the linked seam because I've mirrored it that acts as that seam that goes along the middle and actually it saves me a lot of texture space because what's going to happen on one side immediately happens on the other side now this does still mean that you have to be careful when you're applying your textures because as you can see we have sort of a butterflying effect here and it will be obvious if you're not too careful however at this point I'm more concerned about texture space and detail than I am about those seams because I can fix those later ensure that you've got your display stretch on up here so if you click on the drop down arrow and display stretch otherwise this isn't too useful to you necessarily uh, I've got it on angle based you can also have it on area based now as you can see there is uh, not insignificant stretching along the middle but to be honest I'm not too concerned about the area stretching more to do with the angles oh, you've got the engine part at the front in order to prevent some stretching there I've put in two the th two or three seams here and also I've cut out the shape in the middle which you can see that I moved here and that's just out the way it's retained some detail but honestly it's going to be obscured by the engines anyway and as before if I was optimizing for a game engine I would probably delete these faces because this affects the shape of the cylinder I've isolated the intake at the front so I've managed to just cut that around as if I was just slicing it off and once again treating it like a cylinder I've got my ring of seams around the front and I've cut out using seams the inside because this inside piece is really small it won't have a ton of detail but I wanted to make sure that it still has some in case there is any front facing images that I want to render out later same again for this piece in the middle under here I've got my ring at the front I've got my ring at the back and I've taken out the middle using the seams and these are up the top because these would almost certainly be obscured by shadows or other details in the model let's move on to the wing now so again this might this could be seen as either a cube or a cylinder I believe when I did this I treated it more like a cylinder because of the rounded tips at the end so I've cut my circle around the top I've done my seam along the back edge because as I said with the ailerons you're less likely to see the seam on such a thin edge whereas if I had done it along the front you would if I was to show you now I mark the seam there and L you unwrap it you can see that there's a very visible seam running all the way along and that would not be good when we come to texture later as I was saying I've done the seam along the back and I've cut the wing out from the body uh, which is the same circle as you would for the bottom of a cylinder I've also added a seam on the actual where the wing meets the body so I can get rid of some of that stretching on the fuselage model there and that here is here you can see there's still some stretching but I think that there for the sake of a seam and a minor piece of stretching on such a small area I don't I'm not too concerned the same applies to the rear wings it's got the cutout the circular cutout along the fuselage edge for this one I've done a cut along the whole side because it's a lot flatter and there's gonna be a lot less attention on this part of the model so if we zoom out we can see that it's nice and flat top piece there bottom piece there and they're very similar textile density very close together and with minimal stretching on the UVs as we come in here you can see that I've done some more relief seams along the back just to try and prevent any stretching along the back edge there same again these small pieces underneath I've put the texture piece right at the bottom because they need block color at absolute most with along with some relief seams along the bottom to prevent some stretching that's on the back and that's on the front the most complicated piece was the gun part and the cabin so if you see here if I get rid of the gun piece to start 
hide that away. I had this cut out here, so I put a seam along this edge. Arguably, I could have put the seam along this edge here. Um, in fact, let's try that. So let's take this seam here by control clicking along this edge. Control E, mark seam, and then go down here and uncheck that seam. Now what I'm expecting is that this is going to ruin my UV texture map. Ah, not quite. Okay, that's nice. So L, rotate that back to where it was, roughly. As you can see here, I've got that nice flow going all the way up and the seam should now be far less visible. I'll check it on the UV map here. It's looking very nice, minimal stretching, I'm very happy. So you have the inside piece here, which again is going to be obscured by the rest of the geometry, so arguably this could be much smaller, or if it was a game engine, possibly deleted, but I'll keep it because I'm not too concerned. Going back to our basic primitives, you can see that this is essentially a cylinder. So once again, I've taken the top, I've cut a circle out, and I have, if I isolate this, using Shift H, this doesn't have a bottom, so that effectively has the seam along the bottom. What you'll see here is me looking at this seam, and I was about to explain how you need a seam in there because it's a cylinder. But as I realise now, is I'll unmark this seam and re-unwrap it, and you'll see that we don't need that because you have those outside edges that act as those seams. So I'll take that. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go over to the left side. L to select the link there, scale that right down and put that back into the place that it was. So what I've done now is I've taken away that seam so that texture will now go smoothly across the whole of that area there. What I can do now is I can take some of my other islands and I can move those into more optimal places. Just so now what you can see is I can move this here Grab that, move it 90 degrees, uh, 180 in the other so it's in the other direction. Pop that there, and now this can be scaled up even further, so you get even more detail on that texture. Beautiful. Now what I'm sure I'm going to see now is that I've overlapped my island, so I'll go back, unisolate everything, and hide everything. A, enter edit mode, select A to select everything, and as I said, I've now overlapped the A wing section here with this island. So I, that's easy enough to fix, I can just move that. I already know that this is for the front of the propeller. I would quite like some detail, but ultimately I'm not too concerned. So what I can do is I can just scale it down and move it into position here, keep it in this space. be careful so when you're doing your islands you don't want to overlap but you also want to keep a small bit of margin just in case there is any bleed with your textures so now that's in place what we can uh, and all the other islands are not overlapping and they have quite a good margin uh, I'm gonna go back to the cabin this being an interesting shape um, however it was it wasn't too difficult once you sort of use those same principles as we were using earlier. So I've isolated it from the main part of the fuselage. In fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark this seam here so I can actually get rid of these seams here. As I've said before, the fewer seams that you have, the better. So once again, you can see here that that's there. In fact, I'm going to unwrap this. It's not affected us too badly, so just rotate that back. In fact, if I keep it where it is, because what Blender will do is it will optimize it and have as much of it as possible. The reason I'm rotating this is because when it comes to texturing later, if you want to draw a straight line, you it's really difficult when these are rotated. So I'm willing to give up the minute texture detail in exchange for those straight lines to reduce the pixelation there. So I'm going to 
going to do that, scale it ever so slightly, just making sure that it's within that there. And then A to select all, it's looking good. Move this across ever so slightly, G and X, G and Y. Beautiful. As I was saying with the cabin, I can now unwrap this again. L to select all, scale it down. A to select everything over here. L to select just the cabin. Scale it right down just so I can see it. I can always put it back. Rotate that 90 degrees. G, scale it, move it. Put it right there. Just checking to make sure there's nowhere else I could put it that's more ideal, but I'm quite happy with that there. So if we now isolate this, so I'm going to press L to select link and Shift H. What I've done is I've taken this, and it's quite a straightforward unwrap here. I do have one relief cut here, but as with before, because this is mirrored, you essentially have a free seam that goes along the middle anyway. So if we look at our UV texture, there's a tiny bit of stretching here. If I was to put the UV sync selection on up here, what that happens is now I, this will stay here, but when I highlight the vertices, it will highlight them on the model here. So I can full stop on my numpad and see that this stretching is over here on my model. So going into x-ray mode to view why that is, and you can see we have some nasty pieces here where this quad is moving around the mesh. So I'm going to press J to join that there and you immediately see that that stretching goes and this has a much better edge flow. Although we've lost our quads, I'm not too concerned because if you were to put this into a game engine, everything gets triangulated anyway. And the reason that we want to quad mesh everything is to help with the texturing process, which we've already doing here anyway. And it's also to help with modeling so you can select your faces, select your loops, and just get a general better topology. In fact, what might be even better is these might be redundant. So if I just dissolve those out, the only issue with that is we lose that corner. But ultimately, I'm not too concerned. Or am I? Uh, no, I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to remove that. So we do keep our quad mesh. So once again, just to repeat, I've got my seam along to remove it from the fuselage i've got my free seam along the top and i'm not too concerned with any of the stretching here of the detail looks pretty nice we've managed to get a nice big island to retain all that detail a minor detail that i'd missed is the guns on the turret so as always just a loop to remove it from the body and it's a cylinder so we have the loop at the top loop at the other end and a seam that goes along the whole edge and it's on the inside so hopefully we're not going to see it if i select linked you can see that with these i've made them not tiny but small enough because i'm not too concerned with the texture these will likely be a single color and won't have any additional details such as bump thank you for watching my tutorial i hope you learned something useful let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to show you or go a little more in depth with like and share and i'll see you on the next one